cash is becoming weeded out. Uh, cash will most likely be eliminated or, or extremely difficult to use in many situations so that you'll have to use the global currency or the electronic currency. Even though a physical global currency is yet to exist, groups such as BRIC are openly promoting a new reserve currency, which is a conglomerate of Brazil, Russia, Indonesia, and China. Get everyone in the whole world using one currency, uh, which some people think that's a good idea. Russian President Dmitry Medvedev recently showed off a sample coin of the new world currency at the G8 in July of 2009. We have also agreed today additional resources of one trillion dollars that are available to the world economy through the International Monetary Fund and other institutions. This includes 250 billions from special drawing rights, the reserve currency of the IMS, drawing rights that will be issued to countries who are part of the International Monetary Fund. I think a new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. The head of the European Union is also calling for global government. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. Gordon Brown has called for a world constitution. We now need nothing short of a world constitution for the global financial system. Both Gordon Brown and Barack Obama had been groomed to be the next Anglo-American spokesman for this new world order after Bush and Blair stepped down. President Barack Obama has also espoused similar views on globalism. Here he is in Berlin, Germany in July of 2008 in what media have dubbed his new world order speech. Well, there have been extraordinary scenes in Berlin tonight as thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. The Democratic presidential hopeful laid out his vision for America's place in a new world order. In this new world, such dangerous currents have swept along faster than our efforts to contain them. And that is why we cannot afford to be divided. No one nation no matter how large or powerful, can defeat such challenges alone. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way, the one way, to protect our common security and advance our common humanity. That is why America cannot turn inward. That is why Europe cannot turn inward. America has no better partner than Europe. Now, now is the time to build new bridges across the globe as strong as the one that binds us across the Atlantic. Now is the time to join together through constant cooperation and strong institutions and shared sacrifice and a global commitment to progress to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Barack Obama also became the first sitting president to ever become the chair of the Security Council for the United Nations, which only further cites his allegiance to world government. The New World Order will stop at nothing to achieve planetary dominance, whether it be assassination, wars based on lies, and even a phony environmental movement. So it should come as no surprise that they have been tracking, tracing, and databasing our lives for years. Many people are aware that the Bush administration engaged in warrantless wiretaps on American citizens. What they don't understand is that it has come out in court that all the major telecommunications companies have been secretly storing every piece of data received from our phones and our computers and handing them over to the National Security Agency. You heard about the government secretly listening in on phone conversations without a warrant? But there is evidence that your email is also being tapped. The government has been intercepting most emails as part of its terrorist surveillance program. That program has been criticized as illegal because it's missing an important ingredient, search warrants. Several years ago, Klein says he came to suspect that AT&T had installed secret computer gear designed to spy on internet traffic. In the United Kingdom, it has been established there are over 4 million CCTV cameras. That is around one camera for every 14 citizens. Their purpose is not to solve crime, as it takes 1,000 CCTV cameras to solve just one crime. It is to create a tattletale society 
in which everyone is under constant surveillance by the state and those around them. Your every move in both your home and the outside world is under constant surveillance by a criminal elite who operate above the law. As we are constantly under the microscope, their activities remain in the shadows. Obama extended diplomatic immunity to Interpol with Executive Order 12,425, further empowering criminal behavior within our own government. In the Middle East, endless wars will continue. Under the Obama administration, we have sent tens of thousands of more troops into Afghanistan. Living in the New World Order when it's close to completion for the average citizen, for people like you and me, is going to be essentially slavery. We're never going to be able to get ahead. We're never going to be able to amass enough wealth uh, essentially to retire or to, to do what we want to do in life. We're going to constantly be working for the man. They're creating essentially a two-class system. So it's going to be an inner ruling elite and then everyone else. And I got news for you. You're everyone else. The new world order that is currently being built revolves around creating a global technopoly ruled by the elite, in which they dominate and control a severely reduced populace, which they treat as their pets. Is there a possibility that we have Taliban employees? Uh, the commander in the field, or the, I should say the uh, COCOM commander, General Petraeus, has made it a conscious effort to, uh, as part of his coin strategy, to hire local nationals. Uh, I can't talk in this, in this form, nor am I the qualified guy to talk about it, but uh, there is no doubt in my mind, one day you're on one side of the ledger, the other day you may be on the other side of the ledger. Biometrics have been instituted in both Afghanistan and Iraq, where individuals are subject to fingerprint devices, iris scanners, and electronic databases to screen local residents as well as DNA tests. This includes anyone within the populace of a combat zone. Someone has to go out there with the biometric registration equipment, take your iris scans, take your, take your scans and get you registered in the system like that. As scary and tyrannical as these systems seem to be, none may be as dangerous as the implantable RFID microchip. Through various pretenses, including terror, security, and entertainment, the chip has been promoted and integrated into society. In 2001, following the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the Jacobs family became the first family to be injected with microchips in front of a live television audience. We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. In 2004, the FDA approved the use of RFID technology to be implanted into human beings. However, studies dating back to the 1990s show the implantable microchip has been linked to cancer in animals. But this has not slowed the agenda of control. In Barcelona, trendies get chips in order to receive VIP status at the exclusive Baja nightclub. A simple swipe of the arm gets them in without a line, and it pays for their drinks, too. The Mexican government also chipped employees for security measures in 2004. We were interested today to hear that more than 100 law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned, sort of like a cereal box at the supermarket checkout. Mexico's attorney general and 160 of his deputies have had microchips implanted in their arms. It is to provide access, said the attorney general, to the right people in exclusive areas. Today, aside from being promoted as a device that can save your life by storing all of your medical information in it, it is being promoted as the next generation tool for video gaming. Sega developer Yu Suzuki plans on developing gaming technology using implantable RFIDs. He states, people that have some sort of chips in their bodies to be able to keep track of vital signs. So it doesn't have to be a scary thing, but you could put a sensor here, you know, a bit like the matrix, as he points to his arm. It's not really something only in the future. Some people already have them, chips in their bodies. Suzuki is correct. It has never been easier to order a microchip online and implant it under your skin. Microchips implanted in your hand, arm, or shoulder is just the beginning. Some have already taken implantable brain chips that may enable the blind to see again, the deaf to hear, and much, much more, including the ability to download information directly into the brain and instantly communicate with anyone in the world, creating a worldwide mind. It's very interesting that the way that the New World Order is going uh, 
is moving towards a system that is identical to that, whether it's going to be an implantable microchip, an RFID, uh, a thumb scan, whether it's going to be in some sort of a, a tattoo. Imagine a planet where every human being is required to be chipped at birth. This would be the final tool implemented in a command and control world government system in which the elite rule the masses with total control of their lives. This is, of course, a terrible uh, predicament for those of us who are convinced that this system is slowly but surely destroying this country and has to be changed, but we can't count on the elected presidents to do it and we can't count on the elected Congress to do it. We somehow have to mobilize the technological resources of the internet to create some kind of new political force in this country. So is there anything else about the ruling class we should know? Politicians, business leaders, and media figures are often portrayed as pillars of morality while they describe themselves as Christian conservatives. Nothing could be further from the truth. In reality, many of the elite are groomed at a young age to take part in occult rituals. Those who attend Yale are indoctrinated into the Order of Skull and Bones, an elite secret society cloaked as a fraternal order. Yale University is 300 years old this year, and were you to visit its campus, you would see that it still has exotic clubhouses, which look like tombs where Yale's legendary secret societies meet. Their prestige and importance have largely evaporated, but the rituals are still a secret. And so when we heard that some enterprising characters had managed to spy on the famous Skull and Bones Society, we couldn't resist. Skull and Bones, people say it's a fraternity at Yale University, but it's really a post-graduate organization. So it was founded in 1832. And it's not like a normal fraternity. People don't pledge. These people choose who they want to come. So they do the recruiting. They recruit 15 people every year. People who they see are going to be powerful people in the future. So they're recruited when they're a junior in college. A lot of these people come from really wealthy and influential families because they know that this person has the resources to then elevate them to a position of power that can benefit the club. The video shows the neophytes, or initiates, kissing a skull, then performing a mock human sacrifice. Horrific screams caught on tape include chants of the devil equals death, death equals the devil. True. Famous alums include senators, John Kerry and John Chafee, to name two, cabinet secretaries, such as Averill Harriman, and three presidents, William Taft, George Bush, and George W. Bush, who's been reluctant to talk about skull and bones. Does it still exist? I'm, the thing is so secret, I'm not even sure it still exists. <laughs> 